In this video, I'm going to do a trade review on a Costco trade that I just closed out. It's a short iron condor that I paste, placed back on 11.1. Went ahead and uh, brought up the chart here for you, and you can see in, this is my Bollinger Band indicators. And what I did is I put a, a solid red line right here, which is the, the candle before I entered the trade. I entered the trade on this candle, and I went ahead and drew where my short call and my short put were placed on this particular trade. So you can get a kind of idea of the risk that I was taking going into the trade, why I took the... the uh, strikes that I did and how they relate to my individual charts. A couple of things, I really did not get a good feel when I entered this trade. I remember on this particular day I'd been looking for a lot of trades, going through my uh, my, my stock list, trying to find the, uh, the right trade for me, and I, I guess I got a little impatient. So I actually took this trade at a lower credit than I should have. So I really didn't have a great return. Uh, you know, I was, it's my small account, so I didn't have a lot of risk, but Still wasn't the perfect time to enter it, and also, if you notice, the, the part of the reason I didn't get a good uh, credit on it is you notice the Bollinger Bands are contracting, and you can see that down here, too, uh, that, that it was everything was starting to contract, which means that usually that means that implied volatility is lower, and that means that you are not going to get the premium that you would normally get when you sell options. You know, you, ideally, you want to have a high implied volatility so you can get more money for your options. And you also make money on time decay that way. But you see, when I entered the uh, trade, Costco was trading at about 296.11. And I went ahead. My, my short call was up here at, uh, three, at the, around the 310 level. And my short put was at the uh, 282.50 level. So as long as it stayed between there, between 11.1 and 11.29, that was my expiration on this particular uh, position. I used the 11.29 weekly expiration. Uh, then I would be profitable, which you can see it did stay within it. I had a good to cancel order out there for about 50% of the credit that I received. So I knew this would close early, or at least I hoped it would close early, and I would get out of the trade early, which I did. I got out on this uh, so I got out right here on 1120 on this count on this uh, candle uh, as it came back to this main level, which was actually close to you know my entry level back here. And I entered it about right here, and you know it came back into that trading in that level. I probably closed out when it was trading down a little bit during the course of the day. Uh, the Bollinger Bands that you know it hit, hit a three ATR here, but that held, uh, and this protected me on my short uh, call side. Let's take a look at, at a couple of other indicators just to get an idea of what it looked like when I entered. This is my wave indicator. You can see it was right in the middle of the wave, which you know is telling me that uh, basically I got this two ATR band on each side that I would expect it to stay within on this particular indicator. And it did. You know, it hit the, the two ATR band here. Uh, certainly, you know, I'm paying attention to the ATR band coming up toward this strike. I want to you know keep a close eye on that even though I, I typically don't close these out until they either hit my good to cancel order or the uh, time runs out on me and then I'll take a loss or a gain depending on what it looks like at that point. Uh, you can also see that you know, RSI was right in the middle so I really wasn't expecting you know from here I could have got a move either direction. Uh, you know if I were looking to uh, for a uh, directional trade I, I would have been looking more toward the long side. Uh, just because I'm in the wave, I've got an uptrend going on. Uh, but if we were going to do a directional trade, I'd need to take a look at, at some other things. But just on this indicator, you know, that would be the indication that it might be moving up. And that was one reason I, I was trying to be real careful where I placed this short call. Let's take a look at my moving average indicators. Uh, they look a lot like the wave indicator, but this, this is actually not the same indicator. These, these are exponential moving averages. This is a 50 simple and a 200 simple. But you can see it was right around this, uh, I think this is a 20 EMA. It was right in that level uh, when I placed the trade. You know, it bounced around these indicators. It really didn't, you know, it got pretty good support right here on the, the 20 EMA, which you know, as I look back in the stock and different stocks behave differently. But, you know, this one seemed to, you know, find support at the 20 and the 30. And you can even see that here as it found support at the 30. Uh, you got what looks like a, a possible change in direction here, but just you, know, you have to pay attention to these trend lines because it's going to want to, the trend is the trend until it changes. So kind of keep that in mind. 
Uh, let's take a look at the actual trade sheet on this one. You can see uh, this one of the trade sheets that I use. I'll give you an idea how I keep up with my trades. Uh, this was, again, this was my uh, small account. And, and you can see I noted after I got in the trade and I started running the numbers that I realized I really didn't get a very good credit. Uh, when I placed it, I thought I was doing pretty well. And then after I started plugging it into the trade sheet, uh, which is before this was entered, uh, when I started plugging it in, I realized my percentage really wasn't that great. So I ended up getting out of this one in 19 days at about a uh, almost a 13% profit, which uh, you know, I do pay attention to the annualized gain on these longer term trades. So 247 annualized. Uh, this 12 is a little bit low, you know, from what I normally expect on a short iron condor. I try to get between 15 to 19 percent after I close it, so I'm a little low here. Not a great return on my risk of 385. Uh, I had a 60 percent probability of success when I entered the trade, uh, which is uh, is good. You know, anything over 60 percent is good. Sometimes if the credit is high enough, I'll accept a lower probability. But uh, I, you know, I, I, again, I should have got a little bit better credit here than I did. Uh, it's just, uh, I didn't. So uh, I was a little, little bit quick getting in there. Now, one thing you will notice, though, is in, in volatility actually went up over the course of the trade. That's one reason I probably stayed in it, had to stay in as long as I did, even though for the most part it was trading around my entry points or not too far away from it. But because this implied volatility went up as, as the trade went on, the value of these options was going up, and that's not what I want. I want the value of these options to be going down. So that did not help me out on this trade, but I was still able to get out, you know, for a good profit. I, if you like this video, please uh, go ahead and, and like it, and also subscribe to the channel. Let me know what types of uh, videos you want to see in the future. You know, do you want to see more of the uh, uh, trade reviews, potential trades? Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to do a lot of education on the channel. And I will continue to do that in the future. So uh, you'll be sure to subscribe and, and click, the, the, click the icon so you find out when new videos are posted. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thanks.